You should never take library design advice from anyone who hasn't had to make a living selling a library in a competitive arena. Okay. So somebody who's, who doesn't design libraries for a living, ignore their advice entirely. Somebody who designs libraries, but people are forced to use them. So let's say you're the people who maintain Vulcan. Not interesting. Because unless the, a, a programmer has a choice to pay you or not, you probably don't know what you're doing. Because you have to figure out, like, when your paycheck is, is basically hinges on whether you can deliver something people can actually use and want to use enough to hand you their money, you probably don't know what you're talking about. Because you learn so much from that that you would never learn otherwise, right? So here's what I learned from, from this process. First of all, we always did provide source code at RAD to Granny. So when you bought it, um, you could download the source code. So if someone wanted to modify it, they could. Nobody ever does that. Very, very rare. Why? The reason people are using a library is one of two things. Either they want to save themselves the time or they don't know how to do it. Very often it's the second one, right? If I'm licensing a character animation library, one of the biggest reasons I might do that is because I don't know how to write character animation code. So typically what you end up with is a situation where if your answer to how do I solve problem X is go change the source code, right? You're dead in the water. So if you look at the kinds of things that object-oriented programming does, a lot of times they're like, well, oh, you'll just, you know, subclass this thing or make your own class that inherits from blah, or like their answers to how you solve problems are ridiculous in that <laughs> scenario. The user doesn't want to implement more stuff in the character animation library. They want the character animation model to just have what they need, right? And so this idea that the way that you do things is like, well, I don't really know what the vertices are going to be. I call a function and pass it a buffer and it puts the vertices in there, right? Those sorts of things don't fly. The person needs to be able to know, how do I just access this piece of information directly without having to go through your thing to do it because that's too slow or it's putting it in the wrong format or whatever else is happening. They just want to be able to interact with the thing directly and make exactly the thing that they want, right? So what we did for two was completely different. We just said, all right, 100% is exposed. So we're just going to say, here are the data types. This is what we work with. And this is, again, crucial. It's a crucial aspect of library design. Your goal is not to hide everything. It's for you to do the work up front to figure out what you can promise and then promise that. <laughs> that is what makes a library good. If you can go, here are the correct fundamental building blocks, and I'm so sure that I'm gonna expose those to you so that you can use them and I'm never gonna change them on you, right? That's when you know you did your job correctly. The other thing, which is object-oriented, I don't know, it's gonna change at any time, who knows what this thing does. That's really just putting a giant sign on your forehead saying you don't actually know how to solve the problem. Because if you did, you wouldn't have to give me that wish wishy washy answer, right? You would know what the right way to do this thing is and you would be shipping me that. So what we did in two is we said, all right, we're gonna nail, we're gonna get this stuff right. Here's how these things should be done. Here's how these things should be done. And we're gonna expose those. When we say we're gonna build a transform hierarchy, it comes out in this format to you and we've got optimized routines to work with it and you can interact with it directly. You don't have to ask us permission. We don't count on it being anything in particular, right? We're gonna do all this stuff. Anything that we can't guarantee, it's all gonna be flexible. You hand us what vertex format you want and we will work with that vertex format, not the other way around. Right again, none of this object-oriented stuff. You don't. We don't hide what the vertex formats are. If we can't guarantee one particular vertex form is correct, we will just work with all of them. And we wrote fast routines to deal with that kind of stuff. Right. And uh, you know, completely unsurprisingly, this product was like a massive success. Like we had hardly anybody use Granny One. It was in like 10, 20 people. Uh, I don't even know what the number of excuses is for Granny, but it's like in the thousands. Like. And again, it was just because we just gave them the tools they actually needed. And the funniest part about it 
there was one place. I just wasn't good enough at the time is really what it was. There's one place in Granny where we didn't do that. It was the control system, the thing that does the animation updating. Looking back at it now, having had everything from then, I mean, this is like 2002, 2001 or something when this stuff is all happening, 2000, somewhere around there, millennium, turn of millennium. Um, having had the next 20 plus years to learn from the, that lesson of no, 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 solving a programming problem means you know what it's doing, not you don't, right? Um, I now look back on this part of the code and go like, it would have been so simple to do it the right way. Like, I just know intuitively what the right is, but, but at the time this was all new to me, right? Cause we hadn't really thought it through. And it was me and Jeff Roberts who did a lot of this work to try and figure out how, how are we going to make a library that did this? Cause they'd already done it for things like video, but video is much simpler, uh, in terms of what it, how it interfaces a video, you just kind of expect to get some color planes back or something like there's not really this tight integration. Like there's the character animation characters, you know, all these things like, oh, I need to IK adjust that thing, or I need to know where the hand is. Uh, you know, there's all this stuff that's much more into it's like, there's a lot more integration. It's a much harder problem for library design. It's not a harder problem for implementation necessarily because video codecs are very hard to make. So it's not really like that the product is harder, but the interface, like the library boundary layer is much harder. I would say character animation is like one of the harder things you could try to do. So it's very difficult. Um, anyway, one section of the code did not work this way. And I think it's the worst part of the product by far. Um, I mean, I don't think this product is still so, I mean, I, I think you can still technically get it because there's still some people who rely on like the export. Like you make stuff like this, it hangs around forever, right? It's just like COBOL or something. It 